Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. Ah, today is Friday. You know I love a Friday. First, I wanna thank everybody for all the sweet notes. Yesterday, I just felt like I wanted to share something that everybody who's online runs into, whether you're creating videos, writing articles, or just being part of a community, there's always going to be some crabby person <laughs> who has to comment on something that is just, you know, they didn't need to do that. So I just thought it was interesting to share with you since it was a public comment that anybody could see and some of you are, had already seen it, that this is the kind of thing that happens and you just slough it off. It is just really not worth any of our time to think about. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you know me, I don't dwell on those things. I don't um, take them to heart. You know, I have very thick skin. <laughs> So that's that's that. Also, you've been doing amazing, amazing blocks for uh, Sweet Dreams. Oh my goodness, such awesome blocks. And a lot of you are showing your group of them. And so we have four of them now. So it has just been wonderful to see them. They're so pretty, so creative. If you need ideas, just go to the uh, photo tab at my community page also at my website uh, whenever I have an article, which you'll get a link to for the emails that you're signed up for, and it's in the description box here. Uh, there's at the end a photo sharing area for those who like to do that there. That's a service I pay for. Uh, I can't really get a large size picture from that to show you here, so I can only get those off of the Facebook community. Okay, so on our calendar today, speaking of calendars, First, on the calendar today was Lululemon Wonderland, but we're kind of that wrapped up for that. Mine's ready to go to the spa uh, to be quilted by Judy uh, in, in a, when his turn comes up. And so, but also I will at the end here, I have the calendar for February ready. So I will talk about it th that at the end. Ah, I remembered what Woodland Wonderland was. <laughs> I have some of your that I saved off to show you. So after this little mitten discussion, we'll see a little uh, quilt show of your Woodland Wonderlands. Today is Montana Mitten Day. Yes, I am doing it. So I'm going to make the mittens. <laughs> I feel like Laura on the Garden Answer. If you watch Garden Answer, Laura will just wake up in the morning sometimes and say, oh, like the other day she was doing some things and she found a light bulb and I think it was a decorative bulb that you would do things, you know, put things in. And she found that and she says, oh, I'm going to put a little miniature cactus garden in there. I feel like that today. Oh, I'm just going to make the mittens today. But if I don't make them soon, it won't happen in January. And you know that's one of my goals. Plus, we woke up to 12 degrees in Virginia, which is really cold for my part of Virginia. We rarely get into single digits. Um, the sun is out though. Yes, small miracles, thank you. Okay, so I am going to take this peach fabric, which I still have an obscene amount of. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, it's, it's a really sort of orange creamsicle color. <laughs> crazy. Why do I have so much of this? And I've used it like in two different projects. And so this will be my uh, sample. I'm going to do one mitten out of this just to cut it, check the size, check uh, the process of making it. So I thought I would just film little sections as I go along. Kate at the Confidence Stitch, which is where the mitten kit comes from and the pattern. You can get those at the Confidence Stitch. My friend Kate, she's in Montana. That's why it's called Montana Mittens. Uh, she did a video. Well, Maisie, who works for her, did the video. Uh, it was something they ran on Facebook and YouTube when the, the mitten pattern first came out. So that is linked below and at my website today. I just embedded it in my website so you can just watch it there. Uh, that way, if you want to watch Maisie put it together, you can do that but I'm just going to show you the parts. So first thing is, I am going to go with the medium because I think that's probably accurate for my hand. I do not have small hands, uh, so I think I have pretty much have a medium hand. And I am just going to cut these pattern pieces out and then um, cut it out of the orange. So now watching somebody cut paper is like watching paint dry. So I will skip forward every so often here to show you where I'm at. <laughs> the first thing to do either maybe before cutting your pattern <laughs> or at least right before you do anything else is to 
read through this and see what exactly the pattern says, any kind of pattern you're doing, particularly if you're doing something you haven't done for a while, uh, if you're doing a technique you haven't done for a while. Like I haven't done a lot of garment sewing lately, like none for a while, <laughs> a long time. It's something I'd like to do again, but I just haven't done it. So I want to read through and I'll probably go and watch the video. I just went and did a, watch a small part of it the other day, but I think I'll go ahead and just watch through it and see what the process is then. I will cut up the creamsicle fabric and make one mitten. <laughs> so I did a little mock-up and it's inside out right now, but it fits. I might just do a little bit of adjustment here for the thumb. It is, it is, well, maybe not. I can pull it across like that. It's, it's got, you know, you can see the pinch room there because the wool is going to be a little bit thicker than this cotton. So I have another tip to give you here. If you would write on your pattern pieces, uh, the A for top. So this is actually, these guys kind of end up being, whoops, whoops, they end up being like this to make the one part. So put A and B, the bottom and the top. And then of course you get the whole palm area, which you know I have it actually inside out and on the wrong hand. There we go. <laughs> so there's the palm, which is this piece right here. And then over here is the top and bottom pieces for the inside, which is super cute. So I think for mine, the red will be up here. So I haven't cut the wool yet. So this is just mock up. So this will be red so that when I open it, the palm up here will be red. This will be the black down here. And of course the outside of the whole mitten will be the black. So there is where I'm going. And I might go ahead and just write red on here so that I know. The mitten test. So here we go. This is my sample. And I can tell I just need a little bit more room at the thumb. So I will need to make, make it a little bit wider here. So that will work out. Then on here, I'm not going to go ahead and hem it. But if I did, you know, I could roll up and have the lining. So you could roll the mitten up like this, you know, once I would finish that, that edge. So I just used some other fabric. I used all different colors for the sample so that I knew where I was and I didn't get lost in the sizes. The big rec, see, isn't that cute? Look. So the big recommendation is also to uh, make one mitten at a time so that you don't get things reversed and grab the wrong piece, particularly if some of the fabrics are the same. You don't want to make two of the same mitten. <laughs> you don't want to cut them wrong. So I will go ahead and uh, make mine just a little bit bigger, but ah, so cute. Okay, the next step, cutting the real wool. And I'll show you after I lay it. I'll show you laying it out and then after I cut it. <laughs> so I laid down the pieces onto the patterns. So I will be doing two of the bottom part, which is where you see the green here. So that will be the bottom part in black. So we'll do one here and then I will cut one on the opposite side. And then for the top part, the top part of the mitten will also be the black. So I'll do one here. I don't know that I need to rotate them, but one here. So that will be what I cut out. The red is this part of the mitten. So that's what I have for red. And on the pattern piece, you can see that it is the curved part. So that will be the red and I will do two of these. Now I do need to make my pattern just a little bit bigger. So what I am going to do is just take the large piece and make it uh, like between. I will take the medium on top of the large and then just make one that's kind of in between the two. And I think that'll be totally fine. Uh, I'm so excited to cut it. Remember to look closely at the pattern because things are written on here. This is doing the left. When you're cutting it this way with this is face up, you're cutting the left side mitten and you're cutting then when you uh, flip it over, it's the right side mitten. So when you're making your, pattern pieces, 
be sure that you have done, you know, a little tracking so you don't make two lefts and two rights. So what I'm going to do is after I cut the left one, I'm going to check mark it and then I will, you know, flip it over and cut out the the right side and then I will check mark it. That way I know I've gotten them. The outside mittens are cut. These are right sides together still, so I will end up taking these apart and putting them on the sides that they will go on. So the right side up is this one, so it will go on the right side, right, over here. And this is the left, and it will go over on this guy. Okay, so that's because they'll be doing like this, right? So I have to turn it over. But this, this red actually has a little bit of difference, I think, on one side than the other. One side is a little bit nubbier. So now they're situated together. And I will go and sew one mitten, which is, hold on one sec here. I'm going to sew one outside mitten for today because that's about all the time I have. Because next I have to assemble everything that I've got done and I have to finish the calendar, I have to upload everything and do all of that stuff. So this is as far as I will get today. I will get the one mitten done. Here they are. I just got them done. <laughs> I haven't even <laughs> fixed them, like pushed all the edges real close. They are, I think, a little bit too long. So I think I want to make that tip, the, the ends, just a little bit Pull those in a little bit. They don't need to be flapping out there so much. But I need to measure that carefully. So I got these done. These are the outside. What I will do next is do a lining. I'll first I'll fix this part and then I'll do one lining and see if I want to put lining in it. So I'll put the lining in and then decide does that feel like it's too much or should I, will I just go with these? So cute. Look how cute they are. My Montana mittens. So excited. All right, we're going to talk about the Woodland Wonderland by you. <laughs> they have a great number of them. We're just going to do a little parade of quilts here. So settle in. All righty, Woodland Wonderland by you. This one is by Beverly, and it's pretty much like the kit, but what I liked is that she gave the gnome a little face, and that is just so darling. And then she added the acorns. You'll see on the, right above the mushrooms. Those are part of the pattern, but not everybody has added them. Diana has added, has done a black background, and she's got pinks and reds and sort of a light green. I really love how this turned out. Heidi's is a very, uh, on a beige background, a, you know, an ivory kind of background. And I love the wings on the owl. It looks like she fussy cut some fern fabric. And I'm just looking, every time you look at these, pick one item. Like I'm looking at how like the holly looks like underneath the hedgehogs. I thought those are always so cool on everybody's quilts. You know, Jane has uh, two pictures. First is this one. She's got it quilted. Yes, look at that all quilted up. I just love the tan background. And then the backing. Oh my goodness, she found little hedgies over the background. That is just so darling. Now I want to go out and find that fabric. Jill's is on a, looks like a very light gray, but then she did all tones of gray and a navy, shades of navy. Looks like some lighter, some darker, there's some plaids in there. That is just amazing. I think some of those fabrics look like batiks as well, so I don't know if all, I know that not all of them probably aren't, but they might be. Jones, oh my goodness, also on a light gray background, but the green, the green and the sort of orange and gold, oh, pop, 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 it just is so cool. This is so fun to see all of them, one right after the other. Joyce's is on a chocolatey background, and she's got darker teal with sort of a reddish, reddish browns, and then look at her border. I think she did scrappy blocks, like crumb blocks, in between square and the squares, which are... Uh, half square triangles. So cool. I love this color palette. Kim's is on a dark background as well and she did, this looks like a, a black. I love how these blocks are. Some of them are got great fussy cutting. Look on the top, on there's three in a row, the right side one. Ah, perfect. Looks like some plaid in there too. 
Mary Kay's. I can't tell whether that's a chocolate brown background. It kind of looks like it. The teal and the pinks or the salmony pinks. Oh my goodness. And little couple little pops of yellow. Plus I see a few fussy cutting like just to the block of the left of the hedgie is a little fox in the middle. Gotta watch those foxes in the hen house. Nadine's, she did a gorgeous job. Nadine went and substituted out the gnome. And so she has a squirrel in there, which turned out super cute. Okay, Robin's is on a really light background. It might be a really light gray, but look at the owl's eyes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he looks like he's been up all night. And the hedgy fabric is also just amazing. Super cute. She added the acorns as well. Okay, Sharon's, oh, she's got some really pretty, looks like a toile type fabric. Uh, and I just love her little gnome's uh, outfit, his little black and white, looks like black and white, just super cute. Sharon's is on a, looks like a very light tan and a great salmon colors in there with some, a lot of gray used, which I'd like for the hedgehog and for the owl. Now what's neat is that uh, Sue's background, when you look at them, you know, one right next to each other, they're, they're fairly similar color backgrounds, but her uh, quilt looks so much different. Really pretty light yellows, light greens. Okay, one more. <laughs> Got Suzanne. Suzanne, who is here in our morning chats at 7 a.m. Uh, when the videos, just before the videos run. So Suzanne, I know that she was pulling everything she already owned, and it just looks so great. Loads of beautiful greens and reds. It gives very much a Christmas vibe like the original book. How fun is that? I just love doing these parade of quilts. I gather them up. There are so many more that I can't show them all. You know, so many of you are sewing along on these and sharing your quilts. I do the best that I can. I grab, you know, 10, 15 of them and then do these, uh, these um, little parade of quilts. All right. Besides <laughs> all that fun for today, I also did the calendar. I got the calendar done. Now, remember there are two pages. So the second page is kind of a list of projects and dates and things and upcoming projects. So you can see what's coming up. And then this is our calendar for the month. Now, if there is something that ends up being a little, you know, like on the wrong day or something like that, I'll just correct it as we go along. I just don't go and make a new one that's too much trouble. So I will just tell you here on the video if there's something that turns out to be a little out of whack. I don't have my Cindy anymore. Cindy was the other half of my brain for this because she always knew all the projects and what was going on and she was able to kind of help me out and say, yes, these are all the things we've been talking about. And so I, t I miss her terribly, as I know her husband does. So Cindy passed away in November, for those of you who are unfamiliar or new, just new, new here and didn't know about Cindy, who was my good friend and my long armor and uh, helped me in my business. So, so I'm sort of struggling <clears throat> a little bit with, you know, keeping track because I don't have a sounding board. I don't have one person that's kind of keeping track and it can help me out and say, yeah, that's what we were gonna do. That's what we talked about. So if I miss something, just uh, let me know, send me an email because that'll be the best way for me to check it and then I can add it or decide maybe I'm not going to do it now because I know occasionally I'll talk about something and then it won't happen. All right, download your month of love Every month is love for quilters, but you know, February is extra special and it's red, red, everything red. <sighs> Plus my Montana mitten. I just think they're so cute. Ah, and I have not, it's, it's good. It's good to do something that stretches your brain every so often, just because I have not done anything dimensional. I haven't even made a, a bag since my, my book when I made the little, you know, bucket bag that's in, and the, and the stocking. And so that's been, you know, like almost two years since I made that. That was a while ago. <laughs> so it's, you know, you have to get back into something that's just not a flat top of a quilt. <laughs> All right, my friend. I love you. Mwah. See you online.